Coming to you live from downtown Detroit, this is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep with your host, Joel Conan. This is a volatile puppy here, isn't it? And Dennis Dick. I've bitten a penny. I will buy the stock for a penny. With everything you need to start your trading day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this Tuesday edition of Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. Spencer Israel, as always, joined by Joel Elkanen and Dennis Dick. Today, we have some earnings, but we also have a battle of the short squeezes, Tesla versus Beyond Meat. That is the question Dennis is asking this morning. Who will win? Which short squeeze will rip your face off more, Tesla or Beyond Meat? But we do have some earnings, as I mentioned. Uh, Wells Fargo. Citigroup, JP Morgan, Delta Airlines, all out this morning. So we'll talk through some earnings, a couple of ratings, but the short squeezes and the earnings are going to be the dominant theme of the show today. Our guest is Nick Shaheen, joins us every other Tuesday. He is the author of Create Income with Option Spreads. He'll be on in about 35 minutes. Joel, uh, how much are we up? Oh, we're is, down is, is today, Spencer. Oh, Got a me. big surprise. Big old range overnight. Uh, they rallied to spooze at 96.75. That's a new all-time high. And then you had a mysterious decline at 32.75 and a quarter. That's a that's a 21 point drop. Back trading down a buck 75. We'll keep an eye on that all-time closing high price at 89.75. Crude up 41 cents at 58.49. Gold in the red by 7.80 at 15.42.80. Silver in the red by nearly a quarter at 17, 75 and a half. And don't look now, Bitcoin up $385 at 8,585. That's the futures. Triple D, uh, before we get into the markets, I got, I, I know people don't, don't like when we talk about non market stuff, but I want you to do one thing for me this weekend. What? I want now, do they sell Pelotons in Canada? You want me to go buy a Peloton? Yes. Uh, I'm probably not going to do that for you. I don't think it's in the, it's a, not in the budget. I don't think it's in the budget. Okay. Well, maybe I'll have to. Why? Get... Why? Uh, Are you loving your Peloton? Tell me about your Peloton. You, you, we talked about it a little bit yesterday, but seriously though. Are you, uh, are you a fan? Are you going to stick with this? I'm a huge this? fan. I'm a huge so, fan. Talk about all the expenses. First, how much did it cost you? Secondly, what is the subscription You know that you pay every month? Okay. Third, so... why? Okay, first of all, they don't make you pay for the whole thing and they don't charge you interest, right? So you, so you can put nothing down. Nothing down. You got to love that. We'll case. worry about that after. If I don't lose weight, I'm returning it. Okay. Um, I think it's 69 bucks a month for now. And that includes your like payment on the machine yes. plus your subscription? It's like it's like free. So are you just like renting this thing then basically? Oh, I own it. it? I own so it. You have to, so how long is this payment for? Like the next 10 years? Uh, I think the 69 is for maybe two years, two and a half years. Okay. And then after that, then it goes down to 39.99 or something like and that. And then you just pay that in perpetuity. Yes. Forever and ever and ever. Yes. What well, talk about the workout. Is it that much better? I mean, it looks like a stationary bicycle. There's hundreds of workouts on there. Well, there's lots of workouts, you know, on a, on a stationary bicycle as well. There's yoga. You could do yoga on there. How do you do yoga on a stationary bicycle? It, you, you're because you're you well you obviously it stretches off, you out you get off the bike to do the yoga no, you get off the bike to do the yoga you do you do <laughs> well, i could do yoga on my floor too and it doesn't cost me 69 dollars a month i'm telling you the cardio and you know who my instructor was yesterday who dennis well and just De so it wasn't me so it was just another dennis out there oh yeah it's a I nice name though they got a lot of instructors. You also like when you get set up on each other, on it, and I haven't done this yet. We can compete against each other. We can just go head to head, mono yeah. mono. Yeah. So we go head to head, just like Beyond Meat and Tesla's going Let's head go. to Let's head go. today. Look at this you, segue Joel gives us. This is do, I, do I need to talk to Laura, or will you please go check it out? Because you never leave the house and you don't. It would be good for me. I have a treadmill though. I actually went on the treadmill two uh, days this ago. This is better than it. I, I did a rock and roll thirty. I didn't have time to make it. It was just day. awesome. You it don't even feel like you're working out. No, I was sweating like crazy, man. <laughs> okay, let's go. So Joel's a fan of the Peloton, but let's go to the tail of the tape. It's Tesla versus Beyond Meat. Who can squeeze them more? Find out today. 
We're finding out this morning here. This is such an impressive short squeeze. I did not think Beyond Meat had it in it to squeeze them this much. I thought they could squeeze it to 100. I did not think two days later they could squeeze it to 125. So I am very, very impressed with the power of this short squeeze. And that is what it is. This is a short squeeze. I don't think it is anything else. I don't think this is, you know, the, the start of the new revolution that we're all going to be eating fake meat. We're throwing the cows out the window. No more worrying about global warming because nobody's going to have any cows to, uh, farting on their pastures. So we don't have to worry about the methane being produced. But in any regard here, in any regard, all I want to say is I am very, very, very impressed with um, the resilience here in both of these stocks. The squeeze has just feels like it's gone on, especially in Tesla. It's gone on forever. But this beyond meat squeeze is nothing to just look at in $75 to 125 I mean, it's up 70% in the last four days. That's one of the best squeezes I've ever well, seen. You know, you know why. Why it's, why it's up. Why? What got the rally going yesterday? Why? Because everyone in China is going to be eating fake meat. It, you... There's headlines here. It is the squeeze, though. This is it's just a squeeze. squeeze. Everybody thinks that everybody in China is going to be eating fake meat. Well, I don't think um, everybody's going to fake meat. I think when the dust settles here, this will get ugly. But right now, the power of the squeeze tells you you can't short it. I thought it was going to squeeze it. I thought they were going to squeeze them from 80 to 100. Remember when it was $82? I was like, there's room to squeeze them to 100 But wow, I did not. I totally underestimated the power of the squeeze. I, totally. I, I, I agree. I mean, but you get that. I mean, you don't need, as we've talked about these markets for years, you don't need a rationale. You just need a, you just need a catalyst. And you got the catalyst yesterday morning. It was off to the races. Shorts are underwater. Bots are buying. They're sniffing out the big orders. They're buying ahead of the big orders. And until the bots get tired of buying and start selling when there's big sellers in the market, this is what's going to happen. Impressive. And I don't think it's just bots. I think there's people that are actually getting squeezed here too. So I think it's a combination of everything. But we know when the ball gets rolling in one direction in this market, it can continue for a long time, a lot longer than you think it can. And I mean, the Tesla shorts are really, and full disclosure, I actually have a small Tesla short, but I am long. Um, I'm long another ETF that's loaded up with Tesla. So I just did it. In, and I'm actually, if I analyze how much ETF, you know, is, how much Tesla's in this ETF, I'm actually probably slightly long Tesla too, because I'm making money on it overall this morning. So um, that's just full disclosure, but that's all, you know, hedging tactics and doing different fun things. But anyways, I mean, we're 542 here on Tesla now. So, okay. It went from 300 to 400 in about two months. It went from 400 to 500 in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days. It went from 500 to 543, basically in one and a half days. Can it do it? Can it go to like 600 here and under what it just did from 400 to 500? I say yes. Where does I, it stop? You know what? We've been Where's this the- over? When is the pain over for the shorts and Tesla? Okay. Dennis, I yes. haven't done this on any stock since the years we've been doing the show. I'm not giving technicals on Tesla anymore. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter. It's all just squeeze. It doesn't matter in any of these other stocks, but at least you can see identifiable patterns. I'm done with Tesla. Well, so, there's an identifiable pattern here. It's, it's called the up. rocket ship pattern. And yeah. the rocket ship pattern has not run out of gas here yet. Remember the rule? We want to short rocket ships when they run out of gas. I thought that the 500 might hold. I even tried it Too yesterday. Easy. I tried shorting at 498. I was like, it got back up there. I should have known third time's a charm, right? And I and, and immediately went through 500. I was like, okay, cover 501. I lost three points. That was enough for that. <laughs> so a quick way to lose three points in about three seconds. Because well, when I said 498, it was 500 in like a matter of seconds. If you really look at the catalyst from yesterday, it was an upgrade from a guy that had a 385 price target on it. So yeah. Well, it people, wasn't even an upgrade. Wasn't it just a price target raise? Or was it an upgrade? Mr. Israel, was it an upgrade? Raised, I don't think it was yeah. an upgrade. I think it was just a PT raise. Uh, it was not you know, just a PT raise. Yeah, it was, that was good enough. You know what the real catalyst was yesterday, though? Do you know what the real catalyst was? It was Kramer on CNBC. Okay. And he, right before the market was opening, he does his 9 to 9 10. He went on a rant and said that Tesla is an earnings story. And he was saying, you know, that you know, the projections looking out next year can earn 10 bucks. And he's like, How's that balance sheet when you're making 10 bucks? And, you know, he made a lot of good points. If they start making 10 bucks, there's not going to be a lot of worries about this balance sheet. And that whole bankruptcy thing goes out the window. I mean, if they make 10 bucks, this thing's trading with a PE of 50. 
That's not crazy, especially with the growth that they got. So he Kramer argued on CNBC, and, and when he started talking that piece, it was 489. And he said, this is an earnings story. By the time he got done that piece, it was up another $7 at $4.96. And it just continued to fly from there. So Jim Cramer was a catalyst, more so than that analyst, I would say, yesterday. He's speaking to so many people on CNBC. And he went on a rant telling that this was basically, he almost kind of hinted like it's a value story, earnings story. Fundamentals (laughs) are good here. So it's been an impressive move. And I mean, if you've been sitting here waiting for bankruptcy to happen, I think you're going to be sitting for a long time yet. So everyone's going to be driving a Tesla, eating a Beyond Meat burger. That's what the chat's saying. Yeah, okay. we'll eat our fake meat and our Teslas. Okay. Our, our right. fake meat and our fake motor or cars here. Yeah. Uh, awesome. I'm going to have a driver. I, I like the Tesla. I can have, eat two Beyond Meat burgers in one time. I, I'll tell you, though, and I told this story when Beyond Meat was first out. It doesn't, the Beyond Meat, and we'll go to that one here now. I like the Tesla product. I've driven the Tesla a performance, and it is a nice car. Um, and it's fun to drive. And I said, that's a performance of model three. I think it's model three. I get them all confused because they're just numbers goes from zero to 16, 3.2 seconds. I mean, it is just an impressive car and it's silent as it does it, which is even more impressive with that being said. Um, I don't, I'm definitely not chasing it up here now at 542 late, you know, they're very late to the party, but I'm not shorting it either. So, although I am, I, like I said, I have a short hedging position here, but it's not really a, a short because it's a short, but I'm, I'm long an ETF that's loaded up with Tesla against it. So the ETF's going up more, but let's move on to Beyond Meat, B-Y-N-D. Stock trading up another $11 here. This is a huge short squeeze as well. Maybe more impressive than even the Tesla short squeeze because it's happened so quickly. And everybody who thought that this was just dead and we're going to zero, well, not yet. Nothing goes straight to zero. Nothing goes straight to 10 bucks or 20 bucks or 30 bucks. This is squeezing them here more. So I think if you're in it, I think this is a good opportunity to get the hell out, in my opinion, uh, somewhere in here. With that being said, who knows where this party stops? It stops. I think this is like the hot potato. It's going to end badly because I do not believe Beyond Meat is worth $126. But we can see they can squeeze for a long time. So I'm not shorting it. All right. I, I will. Can you short anything, really? Like, let's go on another tangent here. Can you short stocks anymore? Apple is downgraded here today. Apple, believe it or not, yeah, Apple is downgraded. Atlantic Equities is downgrading the stock to underperform, which is their equivalent to a sell. What's Apple doing today? Trading higher. The market's even down. So you can't even say it's market effects here. Now, Apple, we'll just go up for fun. Unless there's another, was there another headline, Mr. Israel? Was there another headline driving Apple higher here? Did some other analyst say something? Or did the company say something? Or was there another analyst here? Because it's impressive when a stock gets downgraded to sell and it's trading higher. So you want to talk about, you know, stocks that are resilient. Apple's been unbelievable as well. Full disclosure, I'm still long Apple. All right. uh, I still will do tax. Spencer's silent. No, no, I, I said there's no, there no other headlines. No. Yeah. I, I'm still doing technicals and beyond me. And I would say I just got one daily high at 128.46. That's nothing to stop it. After there's nothing that, in there. At, yeah, 137. So they're, they're, there's they're really, really high. not much in here at all. No. Nope. 140. I think there's stuff up there. That's another 13 bucks. But I just watched this thing rally 27 yeah. points in a day. So it's not like it's out of the realm of possibility, but I'm not going to try to call the top on the rocket ship. I'm going to wait till you get an ugly candle in there and you spook a few people before I try this thing short. So shorts can have it right now. I'm not short in the rocket ship because this still has a lot of gas going right now. Beyond me uh, is hot right now. Uh, Texas Linda is asking if Netflix is in the same group. Um, I wouldn't say so. Would you? I mean, they have a product. They have subscribers. I mean, well, I, I think she means as far as sh- squeezing them. Sure. Yep. You know what? Netflix is breaking out. And I went on the show a week ago when the stock was three thirty, and said I'm getting off my bearish stance on Netflix. I said I'm not getting bullish. I'm not get, but I'm not going to be bearish anymore. And the reason I said that was because I believe the Disney Plus product is does not have a new material enough new material coming out new shows coming out to be a threat to Netflix. So unless I see some more stuff coming from Disney, like, oh, they're coming out with this show, this show, this show. I'm already bored with Disney Plus. And that's why I sold my Disney stock because I think there's a huge Disney Plus premium. I'm scared of these numbers that are going to come early February because I think they might not be as good as everybody thinks they might be. So anyways, and I think the street is actually leaning that way too because why can't the stock catch a bit? So I sold all my Disney a couple weeks ago at 145. The Netflix, I got off that bearish stance and I said, 
I don't, I don't, valuation. I don't understand the valuation Netflix. I'm not getting along, but I'm not going to fight the tape here. So I've been bearish Netflix for a long time. I started getting bearish around 3.30. It went down to 2.50. I looked really good. It's all the way back up here. I guess I should have got off my bearish stance too long, held that bearish stance too long, and the stock is now 3.46 here this morning. Breaking out, why not? Why not squeeze them on this too? Sure. I mean, what? how do you short stocks in this market? It is a tough shorting market. Tough we're, to short we're about to find out because we're coming. Into Unless you're like GameStop or something. Well, right. But, or, I mean, we're coming into earnings season here. So we're going to get some real fundamental reasons why stocks should be down. We're getting one this morning with Wells Fargo. There's a good reason why Wells Fargo's down. Their numbers weren't great. So there's one example, Dennis. One stock is down that, that you can short, Wells Fargo. And you short it? Do you, I'm, I'll yeah, tell you, you I'm not it, shorting Wells Fargo down a buck and a half. I bet you Joel's not shorting Wells Fargo okay. down a buck and a half. Are you shorting Wells Fargo what's down a short? buck and a half? What's short mean? I don't even know what that I'd means. I'd be buying it. I'll say this. On Wells Fargo, this is the way this market is. You get, you know, the banks have been hot all of a sudden. Wells Fargo, what's a 50% retracement of the whole move? 47 to 54, come back down, 50 and a half. Here you go. 50 bucks. Call 50 to 50 and a half. I think you find buyers in here. I would not be surprised if this turns around the next day or two. Or even sooner than that. Yeah, you I'm not shorting Wells Fargo down a buck and a half. And if I was if I was underweight banks, I'd probably be buying this one. I am underweight banks. I probably should be buying this one. Maybe I should just go buy Wells Fargo right now. I'm not going to though. <laughs> Don't do that. I not a no position, but I'm just saying I would not. You're shorting stocks like big thick bank stocks down three percent in this market. That's not, that's not a good. That's not a good idea at any time, even in no, a- and not in this market that's so resilient and they buy every. I mean five below. You want to talk and everybody's giving five below heat. Oh, what a terrible quarter five below was. That thing got half its losses back yesterday. It could not stay down for more than an hour. Like it's still down, but it opened down $24 and got half of it back in one day. This market's unbelievable. Uh, you want to hit us with some, well, did you give us a well? No, numbers? I mean, yeah, 93 uh, cents per share is what they made. Uh, a buck 12 was the estimate. Sales also missed 19.9 billion first 20.12 billion. So uh, light on both numbers for Wells Fargo last quarter. And while I'm at it, I might as well also give the other numbers we got this morning for the banks. JP Morgan's numbers were good. They were the first ones out. Q4 EPS, they beat $2.57 versus $2.35. Sales also beat $28 billion versus a little under $28 billion estimate. So a beat and beat for JP Morgan. And Citigroup was out at around 8 o'clock or just after. Uh, Q4 EPS, they beat. Q4 sales, they beat. So JP Morgan and Citigroup both beat on the top and the bottom line. Wells Fargo with a miss on the top and the bottom line. Dennis, did you try JP Morgan? I bet you you're out there. One thirty nine ninety nine. No, I was busy trading other stuff, but okay. I would be. Is that where I went to? <clears throat> thirty nine ninety five. You can't go up these whole numbers and buy these things up at the big psychological levels, because especially when they rally three dollars into it, because that's where they turn around. So yes, no, I wasn't there. I wish I was. Good call, whoever shorted it up there. Bad call, whoever bought it up there, because you got to talk and listen to pre-market prep. Those big psychological levels work sometimes. I'll just use 139, or no, excuse me, 139.48 uh, was a high that you had, but the all-time high is 141.10. So if you really, I, I don't know, that's three bucks from here. I don't think it's going to do it. You know this thing is going to go, is going to have a big old move. And what were you talking about? What was the straddle yesterday? Remember you were talking about, was it four bucks yesterday? Remember you were talking about um, shorting the straddle? Was it four bucks? Was it yeah, four JP bucks? Yeah, JP Morris, four bucks. Yep, yep, there you go. Up a buck and a half. Well, uh, the straddle, yeah. On these conservative banks, and they're giving you $4 on the straddle, that was an easy right. Should have did it. 137 20 137 and a quarter those are your highs from the last two sessions that should act as support and then as i mentioned 139.95 that's your pre-market high all-time high 141.10 all right we're pounding through these let's go to the next one jp morgan wells fargo we got city right at the top of the hour how'd they do i gave those numbers they beat on both Oh, you already gave them? I don't think we analyzed the stocks. Stocks trading higher here. So you got Citigroup trading up, JP Morgan trading up, Wells trading down. I'm, I'm thinking eventually that starts to come back in. 
but I'm not putting them on. I just, longer term, these banks seem to all move together and the earnings don't seem to matter that much. But they do matter. But longer term, it's all about interest rates on these things. That's why I would be more inclined to buy the Wells Fargo uh, sell off there just because interest rates are not going up anytime soon. I don't think I'm, maybe they are, but I don't think so. No, no, they're going nowhere for 2000. I think so too. So Citigroup trade up. I mean, the banks are hot. Here's, but again, if you're buying bank earnings, we know historically from an earnings perspective, we have seen the banks rally in the pre-market on good reports and then give it back. So I can't bring myself to pay up three bucks for JP Morgan or a buck for Citigroup, even though this is the market that paying up still seems to reward you. Just buying stock seems to reward you, but it's hard to pay up for something when you know historically that a lot of times these things tend to come back in. 81.98 stands as your pre-market high. Good volume traded in that uh, on that bracket of 130,000 shares. So let's keep an eye. Maybe there's something up at 82 here. You're 60 cents away. You may may have seen the high of the day here in Citigroup. Keep an eye on 82 bucks. Let's go on to a merry party. Yep. Let's go to uh, away from the banks, but sticking with the earnings and go to Delta Airlines this morning. Then that to me is, is the true start of earnings season when Delta reports, because they usually are uh, the day of, if not a, a, a few days before the banks, but they're this morning. Uh, nonetheless, Delta Airlines Q4 adjusted EPS of a buck 70 versus a buck 40. So that's a beat sales of 11.44 versus $11.35 billion. So beat and a beat for Delta. Uh, for their last quarter, they gave some guidance for the current quarter. Total revenue growth guidance up five to seven percent, and uh, that's they gave some uh, full year guidance, uh, EPS guidance that's in the high six to high seven dollar range, which is in line. So breakout, we are above sixty dollars. There is some size in the book at sixty that we talked about there yesterday, fifty thousand shares. But things are already trade three hundred, so it can easily take that out on the open. Um, it's a nice breakout, but I don't know. If I, if I got it down near 60, I'd be more interested than chasing it up at 61 for 38. That's my thoughts. All right, let's take a look at Delta here, trading up a buck 89. That's a big old move for that stock. Uh, 81.37 is where you're trading. Oh, this thing got over $83, Dennis. Got over $83. 83. Or excuse me, 63. not 83, 63. Sorry yeah. about that. I got you. Yeah, 63.75. I think I would still just use 62. That's the first whole number coming up. Uh, 61.77. That was your August high. 61.77 to 62 bucks. Let's call that uh, resistance for now. That pretty much Next. does. That pretty much does it as far as the the earnings really? for well. We like, ripped through that. It's like day one. Oh, that's right. through stuff. It's like day one of like 30. So remember how long um, last We got one? a lot of earnings still to come. So yeah. I, I, there, there is two more that I want to talk about here. GameStop and Afria. Both knew, those stocks going down. To Spencer's trying yeah. to keep the show fully bullish. They so didn't want to talk about the disaster oh, that GameStop no, no, is. No, no. I'm don't just joking, that. joking, joking. Put that on me. Uh, yeah, Af- Afria is one that I did, sure. I guess, momentarily forget that I reported because it was – a few hours ago, and yeah. it, it wasn't great. Um, hard to decide for this one because we don't have estimates for them, but their Q2 sales, I mean, numbers were up year over year, but the numbers couldn't have been good. Well, it's trained down 8% here. What I will say is they squeezed them on these yesterday. They squeezed them on Afria. They squeezed them on the pod stock. CGC broke out. CRN broke out. Makes me more inclined to buy the dip short term. I don't want to get stuck with it. Again, hot potato here. I don't think, you know, I want to be long or free in my long-term portfolio. But as a trade, it's interesting here. It's an interesting pullback to buy. So I'd be more inclined to buy it than sell it here. That is what I will say on a free uh, as a trade. Let's look at uh, APHA. Uh, CJC led the way yesterday, uh, trading down 43 cents, just hogging around $5. Do we have anything at 5 bucks? No, Probably not because I went not, through yesterday. Yeah. I, no. I just say like it broke out yesterday. So now if you were caught, like just think about, you know, this scenario, there is a few people. What's the short interest, Spencer, if you can look it up in the background on Freya. But let's just say you were short the stock. You know, you think the pot stocks are all going to zero or you think they're, you know, way overvalued. 
And all of a sudden you get that squeeze yesterday. CGC blasts off in orbit. Kronos blasts off in orbit. MJ takes off. It's a pretty good squeeze on them all. Now you get it all back in a free on one foul swoop. I'd, I'd cover. I'd be covering. 13% short interest. Yeah, I think there's I think there's the potential that this could get some of these losses back. All right, uh, CGC's giving a little bit, Kron's giving a little bit back. So uh, see how these things act off the open. For all three of them, just going to give one number. Keep an eye on your close, your closing price. You know, your the people that, you know, bought it late in the day for some foul through in the red. I even think some of these were trading higher uh, when the market was trading higher. Yeah, quite a bit higher, maybe on light volume um, at that uh, 4, 4 to 5 a.m. So Keep an eye on the closing prices in those stocks. And the so, pot stocks did. We should just look at the pot stock sector altogether okay, before we go over to that. GameStop. Because CGC blasted off. CGC had been a consolidation station for a while. And we've always been saying on this show, you know, that's kind of one of the best of breed if you like any of these things, which I don't really like any of them. But um, that's a nice little squeeze yesterday for CGC. And Chrono, same story here. Both were in consolidation station. Both taking off yesterday. I mean, this could be the start of a little squeeze. I, 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 when I see the Beyond Me chart, it scares me to be short anything. And I don't like being short stocks with 15, 20% short interest. Not right now. This is not the market to be a hero in and say, I'm going to be short in this and that because these things are all going to come back down to earth. It's been a very difficult market on the shorts. And Beyond Me personally would scare the hell out of me to be short the pot stocks right now. So especially after yesterday's move. So you get a little pullback here in Kronos, a little pullback in CGC uh, because of the Afria numbers. I'm not that bearish. That's what you're getting right now. I'll just uh, do a CGC for you here. Uh, if you got up between four and five this morning, you had a chance to uh, have an offer out at $24. You might have uh, gotten lit. Well, actually, $24.15 is where it traded to in the overnight session. So you did get a little follow through. You are getting a pullback. That's down to 47 cents. Big green bar from yesterday. So it's really hard to find a, a good support level. Uh, but once again, as always, keep an eye on your opening. And then, you know, if you are scooping these things up at the opening, a lot of people will want to get out at their mark. That would be the closing price. Your closing price in CGC comes in at 23.11. So we did have a couple of companies come out with some guidance and or holiday sales yesterday after the close. Uh, GameStop, McKesson, and Zoomies. Uh, I guess we'll start with GameStop because that's where Dennis wants to start. It sure. wasn't a great report as you might expect. They haven't had a good uh, number, it seems like, for a few years. Uh, GameStop said the holiday sales were down 27.5% on a year-over-year basis. That's big. Um, they guided some preliminary uh, fiscal year comps down 19 to 21% for the year. So more of the same for GameStop, Dennis. I mean, this, you know, we talk about not wanting to short stocks, but this <laughs> is a different story. Um, I'm not shorting it down 12% here today. I've hated GameStop for, I feel like it's years now on this show. Um, I don't think there's a squeeze imminent in GameStop. This story is just so bad that, and I know the short interest is high and could have eventually have potential of squeeze. Stocks squeeze when they start to break out. I mean, there's no, there's so much overhead supply. So many people caught here still. I just don't see this thing turning around and start ripping five, six, seven, ten bucks like some of these other stocks have squeezed. So, you know, the beyond me, think about how long that consolidated for before it finally started to break out. And that breakout was your key to say, you know, we talked about it 81, 82 that day and saying, hey, they got the potential to squeeze this thing up to 100. They squeezed it way more. I mean, you got to look at the charts in, in this way. And there's a lot of different ways to analyze things. But um, I think when you're looking at the GameStop chart, I don't see any reason to think that they're going to turn around and start buying the hell out of this and squeezing them. So I think if you're playing around for a short squeeze in this, I think you're in the wrong stock. All right. Uh, who's that big boy that was in this? The guy that uh, predicted the crash. It, it was Michael Burry. He's still in it. I we've heard it. Yeah. Okay. All right. I wonder what he's up to. These that thing had a nice rally, trading on the lows of the pre-market session. Not seeing really any support here. Taking out that five-dollar level of the low on earnings day was five eighteen. Wow. I don't know about short it down eighty-eight cents, but. Uh, Got to go to the monthlies here and 
Hmm. You're below. Not, you're below that. For I don't. I don't know where to buy this thing. Nah, this is a this is a wild pitch you're trying to swing at here. This is a real hard one. Real hard one to trade. All right. On the upside, Zoomies reported comps for November and December up 6.8 percent year over year, and they raised their preliminary Q4 EPS guidance by eight cents from a buck 26 on the low end to buck 34. So good numbers. Uh, good holiday sales for ZUMZ. Have you ever Trading been- higher. Yeah. This one's more interesting. You're still not quite through. You know, I'd like to see you get through that 35.68 high, which was the high back on the 6th of December. So that's coincidentally right where you just traded 100 shares, but it hasn't traded at all. So you can say price discovery is still happening. The spread on this thing is $2.5 wide. So there's just not a lot of information in this pre-market trading besides the tick, the 100 shares is traded up 8%. So it is bid up at 34. So it does look like they like the report. We just don't know how much they like the report yet. So uh, again, this is a hard pitch to hit. Have you ever been in any of those stores at the mall? No. No? No. I'm sure I've been in I mean, like when I once when, or twice. When, when I walk by there in the entire store, I can't see one thing that I would consider buying. Well, I don't think you're exactly the target demo, Joel. Really? No? I'm, <laughs> I don't know. Unless I take up skateboarding. Right. Uh, yeah. They sell skateboarding shoes. And equipment, it, yeah, right? it's, it's like that. Skater die, man. Skater yeah. die. Arrow what movie is that from, Dennis? It's got to be Gleaming the Cube. I have no idea. I just. I'm gonna say Gleaming the Cube. Actually, I heard him talking. Remember about- Christian Slater Gleaming the Cube? You remember that one, Spencer? That was before your time. Uh, uh, that's, that's before that's, our time. That's, that's, that's a skateboard movie. It's a good one. Actually, I was listening to sports radio on the home on the way home the other day, and one of the co-hosts was so like he throws out these movie quotes and everything, and he went on this huge tangent that if you don't know movies and you don't know movie quotes, you know that what well, you're missing out on. And uh, okay, I, th- I thought of you guys. Appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> bringing it back here, one more on the guidance uh, trend this morning, or I guess from yesterday, McKesson. MCK is raising their uh, fiscal year 20 adjusted EPS guidance. They raised their guidance by 60 cents on the low end of the range. The low end was 14 bucks a share. Now they say they'll make 1460 a share. That is higher than their previously given estimate. So McKesson raising their guidance above the previous estimates. Resistance all the way from 150 to 155. I, I think, you know, if you're coming in here now up $5, you, there's not that much upside. You know, maybe it can go up, like I said, well, I guess in front of the 155, be another seven bucks. But um, so maybe you're a little bit earlier if you have 148.50 selling it. The best offer right now is up at 152, but I'm not chasing this one. This is not the kind of stock that's going to take off in this market. I'd be more of a fader of this move, somewhere yeah. fading this move. Yeah, if you're fading this, just watch when it comes into the, if it comes into the $145 area, your two day high, 45.42, yesterday's high, 44.97. Pretty big move up here. So if they start to go into reverse on this, that's what I look at is the first potential support point. Uh, on the upside, like where are you gonna? I mean, you had this huge red bar. So where are you? Where is it gonna stop here? That red bar that, that must have not even know if that was earnings. I don't know what happened that day on November twenty six. I uh, went from one fifty three twenty seven to one forty eight eighty. So, man, nothing in there, folks. Um, we'll look at that 153.27. Dennis just gave you that 150 to 155 area. I'd tighten that up a little bit and I'd, you know, say 153.10 to one. Oh, there's two highs in the 153 handle. So I'll go a little bit ahead of you on that one, Dennis. Do you want to talk about a squeeze candidate? Another one? Sure. One buddy at Bright just alerting to me for it looks like a decent setup. Um, SDC, Smile Direct. Uh, what is there a headline yeah, here? It's up twelve percent. Up twelve percent this morning. I did see it and I did not see any headlines. It says clear aligners are now available, so maybe they got another product. I don't follow the story from a fundamental basis close enough. I know what they do, but I don't follow all the headlines that are coming out of this. But I see a trade up a buck thirty, and I see this chart, and I think I, I don't know. Is there what's the short interest on this one? Can you go grab that? Uh, probably high. Uh, go, no, it may, not, it may not be high. Uh, not, how much? Go grab it anyways. This is a stock I, I that's interesting. I, can, I it's, it's. I think it's too recent. I mean, it, there's obviously info out there, but yeah, it's hard to get exact. The that I use because see what you can get. It's so close to the IPO. The IPO yeah, it's hard to get a real good number for it. 
So I don't Let's, know. Let how, me go take a look too, see what I can find. I don't know how accurate a reading you'll get on a, a stock with, you know, four. Yeah, it's hard to get that information. If anybody else has SDC short information, interested. But what I will say is this looks like FINRA, but it's similar chart. Not saying it's going to pull a Beyond Meat, but it is a similar chart to a Beyond Meat. Um, you had the two months of consolidation, and now you're starting to show some life. And you get back up there above this 1144, which we're trying to do right now. This is the number. It's trading there right now. Get above there, it could start to open out. And if you were short it, you could squeeze them a bit. I'm not even sure how easy the borrower is on this thing. I'll just go try to borrow it myself and see if there's anything out there. Because um, I'm not even sure it's an easy borrow. No, I can't even get a locate. I got to go outside to try to find a locate. So maybe the short interest isn't that high on this thing because it looks like the locate is tough. Uh, if you're looking for a potential target here, it's kind of tough because uh, nothing at 12. You know, 12, you think psychological number there. But I see a trio of highs between 1190 and 1230. So if it sneaks through that $12 area, it might have a little more meat on the bone uh, up to 1230. And you know what I like to do? My favorite thing to do when you see these kind of moves, 2110 down to eight bucks, 13 point move, six and a half of that, or no, low was 750, but still called six. I mean, 13, 13 and a half. I mean, figure your 50% retracement. There's uh, room. That, yeah. Yep. That would be one. I'm not coming in short and up 12%. Not in this type of market. Not the kind of stock I want to be short. All right. Let's bring on our guest today, Nick Shaheen. He's the author of Create Income with Option Spreads. Joins us every other Tuesday. Nick, good morning. And can you hear us? I hope you can. I sure can. All right. How are we doing? We're doing pretty good. How about yourselves? Good. Uh, thoughts on, I guess we're calling today Short Squeeze Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> Tesla, Beyond Meat, yeah. Snow Direct Club, Netflix. <laughs> any thoughts on, on any of these squeezes? Yeah, I, I had the heads up on, on Beyond Meat. A friend of mine told me that it's looking good for a big pop, and uh, I ignored it. So. That was, I think that was, I think we were those friends. We were talking no. about four days ago at 82, because we know you listen to the show. <laughs> not, <laughs> not patting ourselves on the back, but we're kind of patting ourselves no, on the back it was, on that one. It, it was actually before then. So it, it, Before I the really, 82? Oh, he yeah, was really early. I, I had a big, I had the drop on it, and I didn't move on it. So I don't know what the hell was I was thinking. So 82 next time, to 125 is pretty good, too, though. Yes, <laughs> um, I, I, I did. I did catch Zscaler though. Um, I thought, you know what? There's uh, some sort of funky action, and uh, you know, five cent uh, calls there. the next day or two, they were you know a dollar and change. So those were good hits. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of these things. So the thing is, is to to look on the internals of the stock to see if it's a shortable or not. But uh, in, in this market, when the buyers are in complete control, it's really hard to short these. I mean, just look at. So now, I guess Tesla will be talking about the pay payday, because I believe this puts them in the hundred billion uh, market cap, and that's where Elon's big payday triggers, I believe. And where, how do you like trade something like this? Nick? Like I, really, you, you know, I. The, the only thing I could think of is to sell the extremes. So if, if, if people believe it's going to $900 a share this year and you don't, you can sell that call. But we can also sell some puts below it and collect $20 uh, with a $20 buffer on either range to, to, to leave yourself some room if you're wrong. Do you protect yourself on something like this, though? Because there's yes. probably some people who really got burned, yes. you know, saying yes. when the stock was 250 oh, I'll sell the extremes <laughs> and I'll sell the 400 well, you can stream and now it's 540. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so what, what, what you can do is you can sell a, a spread to limit your risk. Uh, or uh, I believe they'd be $10 wide if you go out in time. Or if you sell it way out in time, you have time to react. So if your thesis is broken, then you can sell shorter dated uh, calls against your short one, uh, even as uh, like a diagonal of sorts to protect yourself interim. So if uh, I, I don't want to be short naked calls or puts through the earnings, so I can buy. So if I collected ten dollars to open up the other one, I would spend a dollar or two to protect myself for the short term, uh, kind of like renting protection because it doesn't quite cover you for the whole term. So it's really tricky. Or you just walk away from it and say, you know what? I'm. I said to friends of mine this week, and said, I'm missing a piece of this puzzle. You know, I get the point that if it's if it's an energy company, uh, if it's a disruptor, okay, maybe it's nine hundred nine hundred dollars a share. But as a car company, why is it $900 a share? 
uh, is it that much pro more profitable than GM? Uh, uh, and what if Elon leaves and all of this? So as a car company, I don't see the 900 or 800, whatever they're calling for it. But as a other company, I can't argue against it because I don't know enough about it. So I'm missing a piece of the puzzle. So I cannot be stubborn with any trade I make on it. Uh, Nick, question from the chat for your thoughts on Target. Okay, so this is the golden child, I guess, of retail. Apparently, it's doing One everything them. right. One of them. Yeah, one of them. Uh, yeah, that's true. But uh, I'm talking box stores, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so again, this is where how far, how right are the bulls versus how wrong were the bears? At this level, you'd have to trade it one tick at a time and pick the time frame that you're trading it. So if you're doing it for a short term trade, then you have to recognize that it has a must hold level at 122 and change. I don't know what it's doing this morning, so I don't put my foot in my mouth. Good call. It's, oh, Nick, it's flat, down really. 27 cents. And, uh, you know, another long consolidation period, right? Yeah. Not long, yeah. but three. This, this is a good one here. I, I do like this setup here. Uh, the recent low, 122.66. You're trading right there, right now. You're not popping out of this area. And then you got a little top of the consolidation period at 125.70. So, not yeah. a bad setup if you want to buck the trend. Right. And uh, you could also play for it a gap fill to the one ledge below it. So it all depends on the time frame. It's really important. Uh, a lot of people glance over it. So they put the daily chart and they try to trade. But there are a whole bunch that could go on in between that. So on, on this one, there's a ledge at 110, 111, and a whole bunch of consolidation there, like you said. And there's a tight range there. And then there's another gap below it. The point of control for this uh, period of time I put up there from, from June is way below that. So at some point, you think they want to chuck back to it. So, But at what point is that going to be? The markets are in the hands of the bulls. Every dip will be bought until something changes. So for now, the shorts are definitely on their heels, and you have to be really uh, strategic. Like yesterday, I felt the need to short banks and i slapped my hands silly and i <laughs> and i said don't do it and i did not do it so i looked at the chart and i looked at the xlf and if you look at the daily on the xlf it's in a breakout mode to 33 and change and actually it's not the daily if you have to go out in time it's a weekly so it all depends on how confident but they have the history of popping on the actual headline and then fading throughout the day so it remains to be seen so, but I definitely opted out of shorting it, even though the inclination was to short it. We're on the line with Nick Shaheen. He's the author of Create Income with Option Spreads. Joins our show every two weeks on Tuesdays. Nick, we got a question here on a stock that I talk about a lot, but I don't own it personally. And I know you've been active in a little bit. What do you think of uh, Peloton? Okay, Peloton. Um Emotional stock. Uh, I, I made a comment on Twitter one time. It wasn't a bad comment, and somebody <laughs> somebody cussed me out. But they came back and apologized. Okay. Uh, if you cussed out Nick on Twitter, then you better find <laughs> something else to do. So I, I was like, "What are you cussing out?" Um, he called me. Uh, well, he didn't cuss me out. I'm sorry. He called me ignorant. So I said, why are you calling me ignorant? He goes, no, your comment was ignorant. I was like, okay, so maybe I can take that. But I was right. So all I said is if it loses 29, it's heading to 28 pretty quickly. And the next day or two, it went down to 26. So he came back and said, okay, I'm watching. So uh, it was, it's just take the emotions out. My comment, I remember my comment. It was, okay, so this weekend I was watching TV. I saw two ads for competing products that were pretty slick. One is called the mirror and one is called tonal. So my only comment. I, I've seen those mirrors as those are, that thing looks cool. Right. So yeah. I, I'm thinking, okay, so Peloton does not have, uh, you know, the first mover advantage. Maybe they do have in the subs department. So, but, but, you know, pay attention to the levels. My comment was first, okay. In theory, it's not alone. And then second, most important is watch the $29 level. And I drew the lines and then boom, sure enough, it just sliced through the lines rallied from it came back to the to the 26 so now if the bulls lose that 2670 or whatever neckline that is then they're in real troubles again versus breaking out from current levels so here's where time also matters so what time frame are you talking about so if you take the 30 minute chart 
you have completely different trigger lines. So right here at 29, it has a ledge. That was a, a, a ledge from which they fell recently on the 9th. So now they came back to it. Onus is on the bulls to take it out. And that would also constitute taking out the trend of lower highs. So all depends on the timeline that you're trading. So if I'm looking at the long term, long term, long, long, long term, because I think Americans need to care more about their health. Actually, we got a statistic here by Marmill. 60% of America predicted to be obese, not just overweight by 2030. But people don't really care, do, do they? They're not going to buy it. I just want to know long term, long term. on Peloton. I love the concept, long term. Okay. Something in your hand that you can. I love the subscription ads that they have where they yeah. advertise no machine. So if, if you can tell me I can download Peloton ad on my hand and I can use it for free for a week or two and then pay 10, 20, $30 a month and I can exercise anywhere in the world, I love that. So Peloton there probably has a first mover advantage, but you know it's the whole segment. So why Peloton and not the rest? So this is where you'd make the decision on, um, you know, for me, I would worry below 27 just on the daily chart. You said long-term, that's really long-term for that chart. It's young. <laughs> right. So- so if you look on the daily, there's a clear line that you can draw at 27. That's your pivot on the daily. So how close to 27 you want to enter? And if you do enter, where do you add? All these decisions is all I can say on adding, um, th that was the daily I just posted, is I, I make sure to space them out in time and or size. So if I, if I bought it at 27, it falls to 26.50, that's not a time to add. Furthermore, I don't like to average down in unproven stocks. You know, think webvan and pets.com. And, and, and Dennis, you also, if you do get a Peloton, you could you could wheel that thing. You could take that up north with you too. They're light. They got <laughs> wheels on them. I'm trying to talk Dennis into buying a Peloton and he, he, he won't do it. Just buy the subscription and work out with uh, somebody that, uh, you know. Um, it's fun. I'm just going to bring, just... yeah, I'll just bring my, I got my treadmill and I got my iPad. It's so I can just bring that Dennis, over there. Go to the mall. I can probably find the videos for free online. Now there, you, so I don't even have to the pay. Mooch, mooch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, He's going to pirate his Peloton videos. He's going to stream, find some illegal. You got it right here. Look, third party iPad. Food. Yeah. Plus treadmill. It's not a bike. So I have a treadmill. So I'll sit there. Get, get a there. jump rope. Jump jump rope. <laughs> That'll give you some coordination too. <laughs> yeah, I do need coordination. I've always been uncoordinated. I should have done more jump rope as a kid. Wait, Joel, what was your question? You were mid-question. We interrupted you. Uh, I wanted to ask him <clears throat> Uber. I know that's one uh -huh. of the few stocks I've seen you take some heat on. Yeah. And uh, boy, oh boy. It's on its way back. I think you bought that one for your son, right? I did. I did. So I, I did. I'm I'm whole in the stock, uh, back hole, even though I bought it over 40. So the Uber situation. Where How's that? We... Stop. How are you holding the stock or you bought over 40? Okay. So. I, I, no, I'm interested. My money into Uber. So what I did last year when everybody hated it, I said, enough with this. I sold puts. Yeah. And like the day after I said, I'm not selling puts on your show. So <laughs> I got pissed off and I sold puts. I can't remember whether they're 26 or 24. I can't, I think it's 24 December puts. They expired worthless for maximum gains. So that brought me whole. So now I can sleep on it and not look at it really. Um, but I do like the company. The concept that I bought into is still alive. So until they prove me wrong, I forget what they announced last, last couple of months, which fit with my thesis, which is this is a company that's looking for multiple branches of income, just like Amazon is looking. So here's the money tree, what kind of branches I can uh, build on it. And uh, it's like the idea that I bought into, who cares if they're delivering people or not? That's not what I'm after. Down the line, they're going to have dozens of uh, income streams. So if one fails or one struggles, the other one will work fine. And they have my flying car. I mean, Really? So they uh, aren't they announcing a flying taxi with somebody, which is so also going to be Uber, not Apple. That comes out. With the yeah, exactly. Car. Yeah, right. Uh, so, but here's the thing with the the flying car. I really believe we could have autonomous flying cars before we can actually See, have. Nick, a, Nick, we gotta I get, like we this. Gotta thought. Get, I like his train of thought here. All the time, Nick. You're gonna come on every day. He's the only I like his train of thought. Only... He's the only person that agrees with you about this, Joel. You know. It, that's it. <laughs> 
Special. But we really dropped the ball because in 19, remember 1985 when we came out with Back to the Future? We're not that old. No. <laughs> Back to the Future. Yeah, we're not that old. 1985, they went to the future. And in 2015, there was flying cars. We're at 2020. We still don't have flying cars. We couldn't keep up so, with the Back so the to the movie, Future so timeline. The movie, so the movie got it wrong, you mean? They got it wrong. <laughs> we didn't do it in time. So I wanted all those flying cars. But, but here's why I say that. Because to convert a whole society, it's hard to put machines and robots on the roads, but it's easy to control an environment where it's in the air, where it's all monitored. Uh, so I think it's a lot easier to get to autonomous flying machines versus autonomous cars. Uh, so unless the city is completely, like if you, if you move to you know, any town in the USA and they say you cannot own a non-autonomous car in the city, I get it, but to have me driving alongside of a robot, we would have issues. <laughs> we would have serious issues. So um, that's my point about, I had a debate a few years ago and they said, oh, it's coming in the next couple of years. I told them, it's, I bet you it's a decade away of us having autonomous cars on the street, like driving around all over the place. I just One want to uh, alert the traders, um, JV Spec, I'm mentioning uh, 525,000 shares are available at $35, so for sale. Big, big fish at 35. That's why I probably got to 34.99 two days ago and couldn't get through there. Huge seller at 35, 525,000 shares in the book. Wait, in, in, in what? An Uber. An Uber? An Uber, yeah. So, but if you look at the chart, <clears throat> I expect heavy supply at 35. You got it. You don't so even have to look at the chart. You if, can look if, in the book if, and you can see it. <laughs> but I, I don't care about the headlines or anything. I seriously, you should, anyone that is trading for a living or investing seriously, they should learn charts. If you're not, you're giving an ace to your opponent. Believe it or not, if you're buying a stock, there is an opponent. There's somebody selling you that stock. They think the exact opposite. So oh, yeah. if you put back, if you put back the chart that I posted, you will see the peak at at 35.04, and that is a huge ledge from September. And so when you come back to it, they're not going to slice through it like butter. They're going to fade maybe down to 32 and build a cup or the the right shoulder. They don't get through it the first time. No, and maybe they fail altogether. But there is a base. So anytime they fail. I, I'm not adding to Uber. I did sell puts, so I intended to add, but I, I was fairly confident it wasn't going to go through it. So, uh, but, but they don't get through a neckline like butter. That's my experience. One more tough one for you. Um, and I want to just uh, tell you, it's trading up um, 80 or 65 cents in the pre-market SPCE. Uh, Holy squeeze. So, yeah, oh my goodness. Squeeze here. I just, uh, yeah, I How can you short this as a concept? It's hard. It, it, it's, as a concept. You can't short, it's, it's, yeah, it's short true, space actually. travel. Short space. I like space travel. Of I would course. pay for space travel. It's if I was rich matter. enough, I'd pay to go to space. It's just a matter of time. It's yeah, really a matter of time. Your house and you're going to go. But I would go to space, space yes. Well, there. I would just to want the, to go straight from like my house. It's not like you're going to space for a month. You're going to space to tour the earth and you come back the same day. Be pretty awesome. Uh, it's would just, you do it, Nick? If you had the I money would, to do it, I, of course I would. What's do it. The, what's the cost? What do they charge you to go up there? And Probably take a couple you? hundred grand. I don't know. I thought it was even more than that. I think it's a few million. I, I Is think it? it might be. Let's go. Maybe they, maybe that's the deposit. I'm going to look at the background. I'm researching. <laughs> if it's only a couple hundred grand, maybe me and you and do it. Nick. Maybe Let's maybe that's <laughs> maybe that's the deposit. Galactic. Uh, what is it? Galactic Adventures? Virgin Galactic. Uh, Virgin Galactic. Pretty Just sure. what space travel cost. Sure, it's a few million. Right. How much is a ticket on Virgin Galactic? Oh, Nick, you are correct. 90 minute flights cost $250,000, and passengers Boom. will experience a few minutes of weightlessness and be able to see the Earth from space. There you go. That's pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome. Quarter mil. Uh, it's a little bit of an expensive. Uh, maybe maybe I'll wait till I retire. <laughs> just just write it off as a business expense. You're doing it's a business stuff. expense. I want Dump to like, trade stocks. from out of space. Dump I'll just bring my stocks. trading computer and then I can write the whole thing off, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, Nick. Uh, we'll let you go. Thanks for coming on, and we'll talk to you in fun. a couple of weeks. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Uh, I'm hoping one of you two can explain to me this news this morning for X Biotech X B I T. Uh, so the the PR dropped at eight thirty. Oh. The, he, here's what the PR said. Uh, modified Dutch auction, right? They're going to purchase up to 420 million shares. Now, there are only 40 to 41 million shares outstanding. How can they purchase? $420 million worth. 
Oh, I misread that. Damn it! For twenty minutes, I've been staring at this PR, trying to figure out how they how this possible, and I can't read a damn number. Holy! Okay. Four see... million dollars, not shares. I'm an idiot. If you want to get your stock price up, you do the Dutch auctions, and they go up. And you know, so it's thirty to thirty-three. So they're saying not with a price less than thirty, not with a greater price of thirty to thirty-three. That's where they're putting the Dutch auction. Buybacks don't really move. They move it a little bit. You do these Dutch auctions and these things move, man. So if the whole goal, and I don't know what the XBIT goal was with this, you know, it looks like, you know, that I wouldn't want to be paying, you know, $30 for my $18 stock when I can buy it in the open market for 18. But if your goal was to just get the price higher for whatever reason, these Dutch auctions do the job. And we're seeing this again and again. We're seeing them more often. So Dutch auction, basically, they just come out and they'll, they'll buy a certain amount of shares that are outstanding for a set price. And if you tender those shares at this, you know, say I'm going to tender at 30, but the Dodge auction clearing price is at 31, you know, then it's a matter of who gets them and who doesn't. So I don't know if I explained that very clearly, but 30 to 33 is the Dutch auction price. A lot of times you see these things trade up into that price range, although I've, I haven't seen one. I don't know if I've ever seen one done 60% above the current trading price. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. So that's a really high uh, price for the Dutch auction. So yeah. I have no idea why fundamentally they would do that unless they just wanted the stock price higher. I just and they sure got it higher. It's up 50%. I, I've literally been, I spent the entire time with Nick staring at this PR trying to figure out how the hell can they buy 420 million shares and I can't read a damn number. It's yeah, 420 million dollars. Not shares. Two different things. You're like, seeing this again and again, and the Dutch right. auctions, and you see them like for a premium because they have to, you know, make it attractive. I've just never seen them come out with one sixty percent higher than where the stock went off the board. So I have no idea why they wanted to put a premium that high on this. I mean, if you were stocks eighteen sixty two, let's just say hypothetically, you did the Dutch twenty five to twenty seven eight, you're probably going to get some shares. You're probably going to get them all. So everybody's going to tender as quickly as they possibly can. I mean, the stock's even having trouble getting up to 30. So right now in the open market, they could buy the stock at 28, but they're saying they're going to pay 30 to 33 just for fun. So I can't see why else you'd want to get a high. I think this is just to drive your price higher of your stock. I, I have no idea why you would put a premium that high. You're going to pay $30 for an $18 stock. 20, I get it. You know, maybe in the open market, you're going to, you can't do it as good because you're going to drive them higher. But I tell you, these Dutch auctions move stock prices. You got to pay attention to that if you're a trader. All right, S&P is climbing back here as we're about to end the show here. A couple minutes to go, only down a buck at eighty-eight seventy-five. We're talking with Dennis and uh, on the pre pre market show, and he said, "Who wants to be short into the open? Right? We open up every day and rally every day." He had that. Nice buy the dip opportunity overnight, but uh, let's see what happens after being down 15 points from this area. Adds a little bit more significance uh, to that uh, old time closing high at 89.75, and really be impressed if we take out that pre market high at 96.75. Did we talk any analyst ratings today? I was and about to. Really, I was about okay, to get there. Rip really, through them. Really, the only you know, we did talk about the Apple one is it is the biggest. Rating of the, of the day, Apple getting downgraded this morning Ooh, it's right now. at Atlantic Equities to underweight. You don't see Apple downgrades very often. It's a contrarian call. We like contrarian calls on our show. It is only the third downgrade to Apple in the last uh, three months and even going back further than that. So we like to see contrarian calls. They're really yeah, – Yeah, got some guts. Yeah, got some guts putting underweight on Apple. That is the big rating of the day. Uh, as far as other ratings, a lot of upgrades, but nothing that really stood out to me. Um, Wells Fargo is upgrading CMI to overweight, giving it a $205 price target. Nothing else really jumps out as far as the upgrades are concerned. As far as downgrades are concerned, Apple, I mentioned, is the big one. Uh, take two, catching a downgrade from Stevenson Company to neutral. We've also got some more uh, cybersecurity downgrades. Uh, CyberArk and Palo Alto both downgraded by a small. Yeah, look at this downgrade, though. Okay, calling this analyst. I know. I, know. I knew you were going to say that. From strong buy to outperform. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? I don't know. Buy, neutral, sell. We I need to like get the whole system redone where they all have the same, they're all talking the same talk because I don't yeah. know what to do. You're telling me strong buy, but it's still going to be a good buy. 
outperform is still like a buy for most other brokers. So I don't know what the hell that means. You're downgrading it, but I guess you're not as bullish, but you're still bullish. You're not. It's not good. As good not calls as by uh, as they were yesterday. by Anne Marie and Spinner on the uh, on the cyber stocks. Dennis, I I know how cheap you are, so I have an alternative for I'm you. Not cheap. Am I cheap? Yes, you are. Do you know? Do you know? Well, you did take me out for a forty dollars lunch. I right? did. That was fancy community. lunch. I know you wrote it off. It was actually pretty good. I was. Oh, I should be writing it off as a full business meeting. I have a. Uh, I have an alternative to you to the quarter of a million dollar space travel. What? Buy some Oculus goggles and just and do, uh, pretend to be. Yeah. No, my buddy space. DP told me, unbelievable. You, yeah, you got to get. You got to go over and try them out. Uh, I don't. I'm, I hear I'm, good things about this Oculus. I I would get a headache having those things. Right? I would too, though. Oh yeah, I get motion sickness sitting in the back seat of a car, so I probably could never do space travel. <laughs> I'll be throwing up all over the place, and not this, enjoying my two hundred fifty thousand okay. dollars worth. Get this idea out of your head right now. Because <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Actually, I never considered. I was in a helicopter once, and after like ten minutes, I was like green. So <laughs> yeah, I don't. Somehow I'm good on boats. I don't know why I'm better on boats. Maybe you're moving different, but. I'm used to boats. I grew what up. What are we doing boats. in a helicopter? Tour of the Grand Canyon. Whoa! Ooh. That was like maybe like oh, ten years ago. But I remember I was like, I was in this Oh, this is fun. After about ten minutes, I was like, How much longer is this? Thing? <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> that is another it. hour. It's, it's like oh, no. all in the ground. I get it. Trying not to puke. Trying not to puke. Don't want to puke in the Grand Canyon. Please don't puke in the Grand Canyon. I okay, get anyways. it. It's a giant hole in the ground. All right. Let's, let's, let's go. Kind of fun. All right. Yeah, let's change the subject. Yeah. That, well, let's wrap up our show. I want to thank our guests, Nick Shaheen, and all of you in both of our chats, everyone in the YouTube chat and the chat on premarket.benzinga.com. You can always catch our podcast, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, tune in, or rewatch our show on youtube.com slash Benzinga TV. Uh, please remember all the information from our show meant to be used as informational purposes only, not for investing or trading advice, and everyone have a great rest of your day. We'll be back with you tomorrow.